My mom, Elsie Hickam, did not want to live in the coal fields. She had been raised in the coal fields. All of her brothers had gone to be, a, uh, to be coal miners. Her dad was a coal miner. Probably her granddad was a coal miner. And she was determined to get out. And so as soon as she graduated from high school, that's why she headed to Florida. She had uh, her Uncle Aubrey. Who she always called him Rich Uncle Aubrey. Uh, I've seen pictures of Rich Uncle Aubrey. He's standing in front of his trailer. There's kind of a frayed palm tree in the background. But I don't think um, Rich Uncle Aubrey needed a lot of money uh, to be rich. And so she lived with uh, Uncle Aubrey for a couple of years. But when she went home to visit her parents, um, one thing led to another. She found herself, uh, she was very astonished at this, I think, that she went, when she woke up one morning and she was married to Homer Hickam, a coal miner, and she was stuck in the coal fields again. The way I knew um, uh, Buddy Epson was, when I first uh, was aware of him, was he played uh, Davy Crockett's sidekick in the old Walt Disney uh, Davy Crockett series. My mom walked in while I was watching Davy Crockett and uh, she said, I know that fella, and turned to, and, and, and walked out. And I followed her and I said, you know Davy Crockett? And he, she said, no, I know the fellow who's singing that song about him. Uh, his name is Buddy Epson, and I said, you know Georgie Russell? Because that's what his character's name was, and, and uh, she said, oh yes, and uh, I'll tell you about him sometime. The story, it's kind of a family legend, is that my mother um, had a boyfriend in Orlando whose name happened to be Buddy Epson, who later turned out to be Uncle Jed on the Beverly Hillbillies. They sparked, and um, he, um, they didn't get married. I think my mom regretted that. She ended up marrying my dad. And uh, Buddy sent her an alligator and uh, to remind her of Florida on, as a wedding gift. She raised that alligator um, there in West Virginia until my dad said, all right, Elsie, it's either me or the alligator. After a few days of thinking it over, mom said, okay, but we have to carry Albert home. My dad um, had uh, been around in West Virginia and Kentucky and Virginia working as a coal miner, but he had certainly never been as far as Florida. And so when my mom proposed this idea, uh, okay, Homer, I will let Albert go, but we've got to carry him home. Um, that was Orlando, Florida, which was 800 miles from uh, Colwood, West Virginia. And in those days, there were no interstates. That was all two-lane roads. And uh, so a pretty daunting trip. My folks were a little bit insulated there in the coal fields of West Virginia. And so once they started making this trek uh, south, um, they ran right into the Great Depression. This was 1935. Uh, along the way, they met a couple of luminaries like John Steinbeck and Ernest Hemingway, who kind of helped explain the depression to them and, and they saw hungry people out on the road and uh, they saw the union strife that was going on and they got involved with that. My mom became a radical and that was uh, interesting. My, my mom and dad uh, were um, just uh, in their early uh, 20s when they made this journey and um, I had to imagine them as they were. I had to strip away all, all the, the things that I knew about them as I grew up um, and uh, to, to try to imagine how they were uh, back in, uh, when they were in their early 20s and young and vibrant and strong and healthy. And um, it, was an, it was an interesting journey. I was helped um, a lot, of course, by the stories that they had told me. But um, also, uh, after mom passed, she, she lived to be uh, 97, and um, she had kept a treasure trove of photographs. And uh, um, I went through all those old photos. I'd never seen them before. Some of them were marked and some weren't. Uh, but with those old photos and with the stories, I was able to put the story together of these um, two uh, young people who I didn't really know until I started uh, writing the story down. So I had a lot of fun writing this story, um, but uh, ultimately um, there, is a, there is a tragic uh, undertone to it. We see the love between Elsie and Albert. We see the love between or from Homer to Elsie, and we see Elsie pining for her boyfriend, uh, Buddy Epson, and also for a dream that um, was very difficult for a young woman of the coal fields at that time to attain. I wrote this book called Rocket Boys that um, 
that was during my high school years that told the, of all the tensions in the household even then, this was in the late 1950s, and uh, often it looked like that my mom was going to leave, yet they stayed together. I always said that I, th I thought mom regretted marrying my dad, but she wouldn't have changed it, because she loved him too. Um, but it was, uh, it was a difficult marriage. I, I like to say I got a million dollars worth of psychotherapy when I wrote Rocket Boys, and maybe I just got another million dollars worth writing Carrying Albert Home. I wish that, uh, that uh, mom and dad w were still around, and, and uh, I think they would really enjoy Carrying Albert Home. My, my mom did live long enough to, uh, to read Rocket Boys, and uh, her only comment on it was, you know, Sonny, if, uh, if I'd have known you were going to make me famous, I would have stayed younger and skinnier. <laughs>